What's up everybody, it's Olaf, and today I'm going to talk about a couple of the interesting starts in Elder Kings 2 that you can select so that your next playthrough is maybe a little more interesting. So to start off, we're going to go down here to the Malmer, which are the Sea Elves right at the southern coast of Alinor with uh, Queen and Jalasri. And this is a really interesting start because you're the Cult of Mayrun's Dagon, they're the only Sea Elves on the entire map, and you can decide to either come up here and invade, which is this is actually where another one of my interesting starts is, um, or you can become a vassal of Alinor and slowly take over from the inside. It's really cool. It's also incredibly unique because, like I said, they're the only sea elves on the map so far. Next, we have Grand Admiral Velik of the Heartless Horde, and he's obviously interesting because he's a pirate Daedra. I believe you can meet him in Skyrim, and that's, of course, really cool. But if you, it takes a little while to get him going. Um, he admittedly gathers troops and gathers money really slowly, so that is something to consider uh, but if you can manage to take over this area from Duchess Fabril, I don't even know if that's her name every time I feel like it changes but if you can manage to do that and get this little kingdom then you can be well on your way to taking over either this region over here or maybe starting to go up this coast but being a pirate you have a lot of access to raids a lot of small kingdoms to start off with to raid which is the same benefit um, down here with the sea vipers is that they're raiders so you basically are just going to raid 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 your heart away uh, for as long as you can. Next up, moving up north, we have the Dureni line of these High Elves that live here in the Emerald Tower in High Rock, or what can eventually be Bellafria. Um, this is a really cool start because they're incredibly powerful, they're really long-lived, and they're just an interesting family. Um, they have a really rich history in this area, and it's something a little different than just playing as a human up in High Rock. Next, I'm going to touch on two of the vampires that I've played around with a little bit. Obviously, you have the much more famous Lord Harkon of Volcar. Um, of the Castle Volokar up here in the north, but there's also another one that I don't see many people talk about and that is actually now I have to find him again because he's in a really small area. We go Chieftain Trenlor of Reachland and I thought it would be really interesting as you can see by his eyes to take over this Reach as a vampire lord that maybe isn't the Harkins because I think that they have a little bit better start um, and a little more options to start off with but you know vampires they're not fully implemented there's not a ton that you can do but it is still a cool and interesting way to get your foot in the door with a something a little different. Um, speaking of something a little different, though, uh, it couldn't be more different than Lord Manamarco, the King of Worms, who is a necromancer and one of the more famous necromancers in the game. You actually fight against him in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and he's just an incredibly powerful sorcerer who you can basically take over pretty much anything you want, provided that you spec into magic well enough. And further north, I really like um, the coastlines, if you couldn't tell, and I really enjoy Grand Admiral Hockner of the Ghost Fleet because he's a Skull, but he's also in the Cult of Mayrun's Dagon, which I find incredibly interesting. And so what I normally do, if I play as this, is I go over here and I take over Solstheim for the most part, and then I usually, which is, this might sound a little weird, I usually actually take over most of these little islands, if I can, if they're not connected to one of these. And then I kind of just have like this big pirate island kingdom while I raid through, and especially this area, it's really fruitful to go on raiding. And as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of pirates, so it's it's a pretty fun faction to be in. It's a it's just some a way to break up the monotony of the gameplay that can just basically feel like you're just a huge kingdom taking over a smaller kingdom, taking over a smaller kingdom, and then you know it just gets a little old. So this way you get a little more challenge and you get a little more fun. Since we're going to go to Morrowind anyway, if you want to play in Morrowind, skip all the great houses. I mean, this technically is part of one, but go to our boy, Lord Diveth Fear, the man that you meet during the Morrowind main questline and one of the only possessors of the full set of Daedric armor in that game. Um, I don't... I'm pretty sure, yeah. So it does have his daughters who are basically just clones of himself, which is incredibly strange. But he has kind of a rough start. It's a little bit slow and his stats aren't that great, which is weird considering he's 3,000 years old. However, I played a playthrough on my own time where I took over House Telvanni and it was a lot of fun considering you have the entirety of Morrowind to work with. And the Great Houses are probably going to get some updates here, I would say, in the near future. So you can't go wrong really playing around in this region. If you're looking for something a little more challenging, there's these three factions down here that are all sort of these beast people. Um, I did a video where I played as one of these, or I attempted to play as one of these in Black Rose. I went horrendously. I got absolutely destroyed. This area is a powder keg, and in most of my playthroughs, it never really gets taken over too much. Argonians are incredibly strong, and there's a lot to explore. So you really can't go wrong here. Also, but if you really, really, you know, if you feel, if you feel inclined, there's a lot of interesting stuff that you could find down here. Specifically, I was trying to look for this lady the old queen 
Um, so she is the remnants of the original rulers of Cyrodiil. She's one of the last Aeliads, so if you wanted to retake over, you know, Cyrodiil as an Aeliad queen, you can do that with her. And a lot of people seem to really enjoy that. Definitely recommend avoiding elsewhere, because if you do manage to be the main, um, they don't live very long, um, maybe like to 60 or 70, and they usually end up dying fairly young. So I would probably avoid it because then you're going to end up getting a game over or you're going to lose one of your heirs. I really don't like playing in Elsewhere personally. Um, the Wood Elves are pretty much one of the least interesting in my experience. They're really nothing crazy ever happens down here and you don't get a lot of pressure from anywhere else. So it's not very difficult. Same thing with Yak like the Yakudans. Um, this area is mostly whatever. Um, there, are, there, You can have some fun playing as literally anybody over here, but... Again, there's, there's not going to be anything crazy ridiculous going on. To round it out, we have a couple more that are kind of interesting. So we have the orcs right here, which you can use to recreate Orsinium. Um, really, I don't think it matters. I would say probably choose Falkreath, Fall not Falkreath, um, as it's one of the more powerful ones. But if you don't mind being kind of small, then you can definitely come over here. You are separated by a mountain pass, so they're not going to mess with you too much. I also, a lot of people really enjoy playing as a goblin. And I would highly recommend it. Not the Blood Skull. Where are they at? Where are they at? This little guy. These Reeklings are so fun to play. And you can do some pretty crazy stuff with them. They're actually quite strong. If you take over this middle section and then sort of move out from there. Um, but that's going to be it for this one. If you did want to play something more normal, like in Cyrodiil, I would recommend Anvil. I've done a really fun playthrough of that myself. And it can be quite strong. Uh, just keep in mind that it's going to take a while for this to break apart. But once it does, you can pretty much just move your way over and... Uh, go from there but thank you guys so much for watching i hope this video was in some way helpful and that you can now have a little bit of diversity in your play styles and starts so yeah until next time i'm olaf this has been elder kings 2 and i'll see you in the next one